State of Affairs is pleased to welcome Dr. Lamont Repolette, Commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Education. Good to see you, Commissioner. Good morning, Steve. How are you doing, sir? Marlon, I'm doing great. Why don't we tell people right before we get on the air, we talked about this Education Week ranking of state public schools. Yes, yes. At least we have some good news in New Jersey, uh, which says... We started the year off with great news. Um, Ed Week, they have, they, they have this Ed Research Center, and it ranked us number one in the country based off of 19 different factors, and one of those factors uh, was school funding. Um, so we're very happy the fact that school funding put us over the top, but also goes with the quality of our teachers, whether the certified teachers, you're looking at the work that we're doing with some of our at-risk students, and also some work we're doing with post-secondary success via vocation. So we're excited about that. We're ranked number one. Um, but we've always been number one in New Jersey as an educator. I've always felt that we have one of the top public school systems, and for years we were ranked high, but this time we have, we have a publication that's credible. Um, that says that we're number one. So we should be very excited. Our educators that are working hard every mm. day should be excited about this. But more importantly, our students, it is really recognize the work that we're doing. But we have some work to do. We sure do. And by the way, isn't it great for New Jersey to not to only be number one when it comes to our property taxes? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had to get that. How about this? Commissioner, you have, we're talking to Commissioner Lamont Repolette. This is Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from the NJTV studios. In Newark, this is State of Affairs. You've talked about this concept of, quote, education equity, and you said this is a moral imperative. What does that mean? Yes. What is it? What does it mean? Moral imperative is pretty much a moral obligation. As an educator, it is our right to ensure that when we're in that classroom. Well, what's education equity? Is the education question. equity is really fairness. It's really fairness, opportunity, and access for our students. It's, it's, it's not equality, it's equity. Some students need more intervention, need more supports. And it's our job to make sure that we give them supports. But more importantly, we look at equity as a social justice as well to remove barriers. And I think that's our take, especially if you look at stronger and fair in New Jersey. The concept is stronger and fair. We just talked about how our strength, but our strength is also um, not just the diver not just the academics, but the diversity in our staff and in our, in our workforce. Mm. And, and our fairness is making sure that every student in the classroom have an opportunity to know that they can have a brighter future. What are some of these, and by the way, by way of background, tell folks before you became the Commissioner of Education, you've had several positions in the world of education that lead you to your philosophy of education. Go ahead. Yes, I started off as a teacher in East Orange Public Schools. Uh, my first administrative job was an assistant principal at Irvington High School, and I was fortunate enough to go back to Carteret, where I graduated, and become the principal there, and then very fortunate enough to lead uh, the Asbury Park School District, and now the Commissioner of Education. So let's try this. When we talk about education equity. No one's going to argue philosophically with what you just described, or most folks shouldn't be. But when it comes to the question of what stands in the way of education equity, meaning what are some of the specific challenges from your educational expertise and experience that a lot of these students disproportionately in urban areas, but not mm -hmm. exclusively in urban areas, face? So you look at that, we talk about the achievement gap. Um, and yes, it's there and it's been there for years. It's almost um, uh, historical in regards to the gap, but it's our job to gap sure meaning those in let's say the Milburn school district. Yes. We happen to be a few miles away yes. from Milburn. There's some real money in that town, yeah. and we're here in Newark. Yes. Go ahead. But the gap is not just in, in, in Newark and the urban schools, it's across the state. You know, if you look at our, our, our data, we're looking at 90, 99% of our Asian kids are graduating high school, where you have 84 African American, 94% are white versus 87. So there is a gap as far as graduation. And that gap is consistent not just in the graduation rate, but also consistent in academic as well. So we talk about the things that are going on right now, mental health. You're talking about all poverty. So there's a lot of different things that, that are attached to these kids that we need to make sure we're addressing. And that's equity piece, right? Making sure that, that when that kid is sitting there in a the classroom, they're not just ready to receive the information, but they have the mental state to be able to, to do that. And our job through social and emotional learning to make sure that our kids are ready for that instruction. Sorry for interrupting. You're talking to Commissioner Rappelet, who heads the Department of Education in the state of New Jersey, the state of affairs, Steve Adubato. My question is this. We've talked to some of our healthcare friends, friends in the healthcare community, who talk about, quote unquote, social determinants of health, right? Yes. What does that have to do with education? Meaning, whether a child is in a crime-ridden community, whether that child has parental support, whether that child lives in a situation where drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. abuse, a bunch of issues. What does that have to do with education directly? Because people say, hey, kids can learn anywhere, you say. It has a lot to do. It's your state of mind. Are you in a right frame of mind when you're ready to receive that information? It's challenging By the for... Way, not to mention who's hungry going to school. Yes, I'm sorry. That, that's clearly part of that as well. But it's, it's, you know, it's challenging when, when an educator um, not only 
has to educate a child, but also know that that child may be missing and lacking something, whether it's food, whether it's um, poverty, whether it's things that they're dealing with. How about with. feeling it's secure? Feeling safe. secure. Safe, exactly. All those things kind of play. And, and over the years, it seems to be more, more pervasive in our students that they're coming in with a lot more baggage. So it's, for, uh, it's up for us to make sure that we only address the academic piece, mm. but we also address the social and emotional piece. And that's the conversation we're having right now in the state because we realize that um, we have to also do the social and emotional piece just equally as we're doing the academics because that's the comprehensive approach to our student. Commissioner, uh, sorry for interrupting. Let's shift gears. The park test. Lots of talk about it. Is it correct that a decision has been made that the standardized testing in public schools, is it only in high schools? No, a standardized testing throughout grades three to eight and once in high school. That's a federal requirement. Well, hold on. This, no, the park test is only going to be going on for two more years? Yes, we transitioned to the park. We also have a new, new, new assessment, um, New Jersey Learning Assessment, New Jersey State Learning Assessment right now in English and Math, as well as Science. So we transitioned from it. We renamed uh, the, the assessment. We shortened the assessment. But that information all came from our, our outreach. And we, we listened to our educators, our students during our outreach. We corresponded and met with over 3,000 students and parents and educators and stakeholders, um, pretty much everyone in the educational ecosystem, those that are anti, those that are pro-park. We got them in a room together and we listened to them and we made some changes. Governor Murphy talked about from day one transitioning mm -hmm. from park. I think it's important that when I talked about the transition must be methodically, right? Educators want to know that we have a plan of action. We just don't want to spring on something like And I'm very pleased and happy the fact that our most recent spring assessments of our new testing, mm. um, same requirements and regulations, but new, form, new format of testing went smooth. Let me try this one. You know, um, pre-K, universal pre-K moving toward that, more funding for pre-K yes. ever before. But zero to five, infants, toddlers, we have our initiative called Right From The Start NJ. Put right from the start NJ, zero to three, together with the pre-K initiative, right? More money in pre-K. Mm -hmm. Some additional dollars going to quality child care for those who are struggling. Yes. I believe $54 million, Jackie, right? Uh, going through the Department of mm -hmm. Human Services. We just had Commissioner Carol Johnson talking about that. Why is all that, the pre-K piece, the quality child care piece for those who are struggling, mm -hmm. why is that all relevant to public school performance of boy, little boys and girls kids going into kindergarten? So, I know so, it's a long-winded question. I'm no, trying no, to So, so research that. says that, states that um, a child's brain at that age, from zero to three, I believe, they can absorb a lot of information. Um, so we want to make sure when the kids get to kindergarten, that means that they're ready to have phonemic awareness, alphabet awareness, all those things academically want them ready. And if, we, and if they're not getting those supports as we talked about earlier, mm. then they're behind a deficit. So we want to make sure that we ramp up. So in the Department of Education, um, we, we create an office from zero to three. We want to make sure that office zero to three, we coordinate mm -hmm. with Health and Human Services, you know, with Commissioner Johnson's team, with the, with the, um, the governor's office, to make sure that we're, we're looking at our resources and making sure that we're pulling them up and, and kind of targeting where we need those resources to go. And the zero to three for us is very important. It's also part of the, uh, uh, the First Lady's initiative. That's as right. far as infant mortality. So I think we're all working together. I know Senator Ruiz is doing, does a Senator lot. Senator Ruiz, who yes. chairs the Senate Education Excuse Committee, uh, born and raised right here in yes. Newark, and, and a relatively new mom. Yeah. So if you, if you look at uh, us coming together as a state, hmm. you have the Department of Education, you have the, the legislators, you have the governor's office. We all see that there's importance as far as us from zero to three to get those kids student ready, as we talked about before, making sure when they're in that classroom, they're ready to receive that information. Commissioner, finally, you say zero to three. I say zero to ten. Zero to ten, you love your job? Yes, I love my job. What's ten. the number? Ten. Come on. Nah, ten. To get a chance to really reimagine <laughs> education in state of New Jersey, there's no other but better job out there. You've been listening to Dr. Lamont Repolette, who is the commissioner of the Department of Education in the great state, the Garden State, yes. New Jersey. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. You honor us by Appreciate your presence. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for Stay having right me. Stay right there. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato, and we'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by Atlantic Health System, NJIT, the New Jersey Education Association, Valley Bank, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, NJ Best, and by Choose New Jersey.
Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe and by Meadowlands Chamber.